Please stand for the procession of the cross. Please be seated. Into getting us here today, we went from labor of love to united in love. And all of that love combined has taken a dream and turned it into a rea reality. We have very important people with us today, some seated here, some there, and some across here. And all of you are important in everything you've done, even the students, to get us to where we are today. At this time, I would like to introduce and welcome Father Daniel Furman. Father Furman, known fondly as Father Dan, serves as the Chancellor for the Diocese of Savannah. Father Dan was born in New Iberia, Louisiana, though he grew up in Augusta where his family belongs to the Alleluia community. Father graduated from the Alleluia Community School in 1996. He was an Eagle Scout and the salutatorian of his high school class. He attended Augusta State College for one, well, Augusta State University for one year, and then transferred to the Franciscan University in Steubenville as a seminarian for our diocese. Father Dan was the student head of the pre-theology program at Franciscan University, where he received a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and Catholic Culture. Father Daniel Furman was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Savannah in June 5, 2005, and his very first assignment was as our parochial vicar. At this time, let's welcome Father Dan Furman for the invocation. It's wonderful to be back here in Macon at uh, St. Joseph's. And uh, it, just walking through the halls this morning uh, just brought back so many wonderful memories. Uh, it's only been six years since I left, uh, but it seems like a lifetime. Uh, but it is wonderful to be back and uh, a blessing to be here with you on this wonderful day, uh, a day that, a day that uh, where, where we continue to fulfill the mission the Lord has entrusted to us in educating and building up the children that the Lord has given to us, helping them to grow in the faith. So we begin with a prayer as we begin this service. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the gift of life and for gathering us here this morning. You fill us, you give us your strength to fulfill the mission of St. Joseph's School to educate, nurture, and encourage the mind, body, and spirit of every child according and guided by this gospel values and our Catholic tradition. Today we begin, Lord, the, the building of this Parish Life Center that will assist us in fulfilling this mission with even greater effect. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for all those who make this day possible, for our pastor, for our principal, for the many donors and the parishioners of St. Joseph's Parish, for the parents, and for especially, Lord, the teachers and the students, the administration of St. Joseph's School. We ask you, Lord, to bless them this day as they embark on this endeavor. We ask you, Lord, to bless also those who will be working on the construction of this building, the architects, the builders, and the contractors. We ask, Lord, that you grant them skill and wisdom in all of their labors. You are here with us as we are gathered together in your name and for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for entrusting to us the formation of these children. Within the walls of this building, may all who play and compete, may all who learn and grow here, be renewed and strengthened in body and spirit and in grow in your love. May they enjoy healthy recreation, giving honor and glory to your name by their words and actions. We ask that you bless our endeavors this morning. Fill us with your joy, fill us with your life and your love this day. 
We ask this in your name and for your glory. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I would like to welcome and introduce our school board president and one of our parents, Mr. Jerome Gautreaux. Thank you, Kay. Um, and it's an honor to be here. Um, if our uh, future uh, is going to be shown by the construction of this building, it looks pretty great. Um, but we also have a rich history, a rich history here at St. Joseph's. And uh, my job here today is to tell you a little bit about the history that has brought us here today. And some of you may not know, but our school history began about 140 years ago in a basement. Uh, it was then, uh, about in 1872, that the pastor of St. Joseph's Church, Reverend Basin, offered the church basement to the public school system to be used uh, as part of the public school system educating students in Macon. Now, Catholic students then could come to the school from all over the city, and they did, but they couldn't receive religious education during the day. That happened after school. And so the Catholic students then would receive education in the sacraments and, and uh, in, in Catholicism after school for about 30 minutes a day. And that continued uh, under the guidance of two Sisters of Mercy until about 1902. And it was then in 1902 that Reverend Winkelreed organized, with the help of four Sisters of Mercy as instructors, St. Joseph's School on High Street at the old Crutchfield home. And it stayed there until about 1953 when the new school opened on High Street. And that, con that consisted, of course, of grades K through grade 7 until 1958. And then an eighth grade was added. Two additions to our school were completed as well, one in 1981 and another in 1992. St. Joe's expanded to have two of each grade from kindergarten through grade 6. And the 7th and 8th grades were dropped after the 1995 to 1996 school year, and those students transferred uh, to the Catholic High School Mount Sales. And so today marks another important step in our history as we construct this great, wonderful Parish Life Center. Getting to this point, I can tell you, and as all here will say, has not been easy. Uh, it's required a great deal of sacrifice. It has required wise and determined leadership from all of our leaders. Um, it's required great generosity uh, from all of you and from everyone in our community. Um, and it's required something else. Uh, it's required a whole lot of love. Uh, the love of all of our leaders, our teachers, uh, our parents, uh, all of our families, uh, friends of the school, our community. Uh, this is really a monument to love that we are beginning the construction of today. St. Joe's has gone through many changes since its humble beginnings in our uh, church basement. And as we stand here today, I think we can all, or sit, we can all take great pride uh, in knowing that we've contributed in many, many different ways to the construction of this uh, Parish Life Center. And these changes that are taking place will certainly benefit our children, uh, but will also benefit our children's children uh, and many generations uh, for many years to come. And thank you and God bless. At this time, I would like for you to help me welcome Ms. Regina Danley. Ms. Danley is our president of the Home and School Association and has a student here at St. Joseph's School. Ms. Danley. Our mission here at St. Joseph's is we're a school that's guided by gospel values and Catholic traditions. The school is dedicated to educating, nurturing, encouraging, children through their minds, bodies, and spirits. Our school does this to create lifelong learners and stewards of the faith. This new addition will allow the school to continue that mission. Thank you. At this time, Father McDonald will come forward to bless the ground.
the work we are beginning today should enliven our faith and make us grateful. We know the familiar words of the psalm, if the Lord does not build the house, in vain do its builders labor. Whenever we look to the interests of our neighbor or the community or our children and serve them, we are in a sense God's own co-workers. Let us pray for his help through this celebration, my brothers and sisters, that God will bring this construction to successful completion and that his protection will keep those who work on it safe from injury. Let us pray. O oh God, the builder of all things, you have placed on us the obligation of toil. Grant that the work we begin may serve to better our lives and through your goodness contribute to the spread of the kingdom of Christ. Through the gift of your eternal wisdom, grant that the undertaking we begin today for your glory and our own well-being may progress day by day to its successful completion. We ask you to bless this ground, to bless all who will be working on this building, and to grant us your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some of the students this week have said, what are we breaking? Well, we're breaking the ground. <laughs> and it's a symbol of showing that it's time to start building the building. And so right now I'm going to call forward the people who will help us break that ground. Caroline Horn, our co-president of our student council. And Caroline, if you'll go behind all the way around and get one of the shovels. Joining Caroline, Jackie Edmondson, co-president of the St. Joseph School Student Council. Dr. Wendy Lockwood, the co-chair of the United in Love campaign. John McGoldrick, the co-chair of the United in Love campaign. Dr. Pinckney Gilchrist served as our school liaison for the United in Love campaign. Mr. Christopher Trott, assistant superintendent of the Diocese of Savannah Schools. Kevin Walsh, architect, Azar Walsh Architects, LLC. Kamal Azar, architect, Azar Walsh Architects, LLC. Chris R. Sheridan, president of the Chris R. Sheridan and Company. Father Dan Furman, Chancellor, Diocese of Savannah. Father Alan McDonald, pastor, St. Joseph's Catholic Church and myself. I love what Mr. Azar said. He said, I wish we could build it that fast. <laughs> and just like Father McDonald shared with us at Mass yesterday, when he was a second grader, he remembers entering his new built school. Well, next year you'll remember entering our newly built school, and our sixth graders better come back and visit too. At this time, I would like to call on Dr. Wendy Lockwood and Mr. John McGoldrick for some closing remarks and they'll be followed by the choir singing City of God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
Isn't this awesome? Today, it's such a si exciting time for everybody. Just think, it was just over a year ago that John and I um, spoke to the parents at the school and to the parishioners at the church. As everybody knows, this building has been a dream for a long time. I think I overheard Catherine Hutto say that this idea started when her daughter was in kindergarten. And now she's in her second year of college. <laughs> but here we are. Worth waiting yes. I am so proud that parishioners, staff, parents, teachers, and children all worked to bring this about. <laughs> Truly, I think that this project has lived up to its name, United in Love. And I am so grateful that I have been able to be part of it. And now I'm going to let John say a few words. The first of uh, many talks that Wendy and I gave over the last year was to the Holman School Association. And we told you that night that this building was going to be built. And it's very gratifying to be able to stand here today knowing that that has been done. Uh, it has been a very long and a very arduous task in many respects, and throughout all of this, uh, we have been sustained and inspired by many people and by many different groups, two of which I wanted to mention especially today. First of all, there came a point where we hit sort of, sort of a lull or a plateau in our campaign. Uh, we talked to about 20 different groups. There were receptions and speeches and what have you, and about halfway through there, um, the food was starting to taste the same, and <laughs> Wendy was getting sick of my talk, I was getting sick of hers, we were both sick of Father McDonald's, <laughs> and we were uh, candidly a little disappointed in some of the responses we got from people who we thought could really help us financially with this campaign, and so we decided that maybe what we ought to do is to try to put the students at the front of this campaign and to have them come to one of our receptions so that uh, if the uh, potential donors saw the caliber of the young men and women that we produce here, maybe that would inspire them to give money. And so at one of our receptions, uh, Kay bought representatives of the student council and they did everything we wanted. I think everybody was impressed with them and it, it did, did generate some enthusiasm, but before they left, they gave the campaign a check for a very substantial sum, and I forget Kay exactly, but I think it was in the neighborhood of $1,000, uh, and there were to be more checks, money that they had gotten from uh, car washes and Blue Jean Day and selling chicken sandwiches and all of that. And when we saw how invested the students were in this project, that they were not willing to sit back and let somebody else do this for them, and that they wanted to be a part of this, and especially when we recognize that the members of the student council who were there that day would not be at this school by the time this building was completed. And I guess that's true of this year's class as well. It really rejuvenated us and it got us going again and it sort of relaunched the campaign. And so to the students, I want to tell you how deeply appreciative we are of the financial contributions that y'all made to this campaign. And uh, I want to suggest that possibly you use your student council members from last year and this year as an example of how you might lead when it becomes your turn and to lead not only for the present but also for those who are to come behind you. And I am happy that all of you who have contributed to this one day when you're my age can tell your children, your grandchildren, you can point to this building and you can say that you were a part of this. So thank you so much for your contributions to this. This is uh, an exciting day, obviously, but for me, it's uh, tinged with just a hint of regret because I went to St. Joseph's School, and when we were not being forced to learn upstairs, we spent all of our time down here in the lower playground. And this is where we made a lot of great friendships. I'm having dinner tonight with a man that I haven't seen in 42 years, but I made his friendship on this very playground and those are the kind of friendships that will last you for a lifetime. 
Now, much has changed since then. Uh, it was bricks all the way around, and at the time, the boys would come down here to play football or basketball or what have you. We didn't have this fancy grass that y'all have now. Um, but the girls would stay upstairs, and I don't know whether they were not permitted to come down here or they just didn't want to participate in what we did, but they would jump rope or hopscotch or whatever it is girls did back then. You, you hear that, Emma Carter? There was none of this sports stuff among girls back then. Um, and uh, as Jerome has said, the, the school is much bigger now because of the two additions that we've made. When I was here, it was uh, run uh, almost exclusively and taught almost exclusively by nuns. Many of the younger students probably don't even know what a nun is. And obviously, they don't staff the school anymore. But, and now we have this playground going away, or the lower yard going away, and this new building going up. But one thing hasn't changed since I was a student here, really since this school was formed over 100 years ago, and that's the great passion that our teachers and faculty and staff have for Catholic education, which for many years meant uh, the principal means by which we transmitted our Catholic faith to the next generation, but in recent years has also come to mean uh, teaching our non-Catholic students the importance of their own faith. Our teachers don't do this because of the money we pay them. <clears throat> and in many ways, we've made it difficult for them by not giving them uh, facilities that they would like to have to really deliver educational services in the way they would like to. But they get up every morning, they come here, and they pour everything they have into producing uh, better students, not only better educated students, but a better caliber of students. And I want to tell the faculty and the staff how much inspiration this campaign has drawn from your commitment and your dedication and your loyalty to these students. When we were asked to speak at the masses, uh, I spoke first at the Sunday evening mass, and I felt like things hadn't gone them too. And when I shared that with my wife, some of you may know Mrs. McGoldrick, she uh, got up the next morning and she gave me something and she said, you might want to read this and see about working it into your talks today. And I did that and I realized that what she had handed me was exactly what had been missing from my presentation. And I want to read it to you as I did to the masses that day. It's a poem that hangs on the wall of St. Joseph's School that says, let it be known to all who enter here that Christ is the reason for this school the unseen but ever-present teacher in its classes, the model of its faculty, the inspiration of its students. That says very succinctly but very fully what Catholic education is all about, and in particular what's being done at this school. Because our teachers understand that they can teach the students everything they need to know, but if they don't have God in front of them, if they don't have Christ at the center of all this, we're all here for nothing. We can tell by looking at the students that are here today and the ones that have gone in previous generations what a great job the, the faculty and the staff and the teachers here have done with this student. And uh, we want to thank you for that great work. We hope that putting this building up will in some way make your job a little easier and that in some way you might see this as a tribute to yourself because our goal since the time we first embarked on this campaign was to put up a building so that when we were through, we could be as proud of our physical facilities as uh, we are of the great faculty and teachers and staff that we have here and the job that they have done. So thank you for the great work you have done with our children, and thank you for the inspiration that you have given us in this campaign through your hard work and dedication.
stand for our closing prayer led by Father Devi Kamakoski. After so many prayers, now is the time to collect them all together. So I invite you to put in front of God's throne all your dreams regarding this new building, this facility, all your hopes and all the fears that you may have. And I especially invite our children to make their prayer because they, not all of them, may realize how important of a day it is today. But it will be serving for their good, spiritual and physical. And the Lord is the most impressed always and delighted in the prayer of the little ones whose hearts are so close to His. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for allowing us to begin this work with you. May our sacrifices that we have undergone in order to erect this facility be transformed by the creation of this center into a blessing for all who will use it. We ask your blessing upon this ground and the work of human hands that when joined together in faith, create according to the gift you have given us. For we trust that in every time and place you bless all good works created and given for others by the people united in love. We ask this all in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Once again, I want to say thank you for everyone, the adults especially, who came to this wonderful celebration. We do have thank you gifts for coming. We have market totes with our school emblem, emblem on them, so if you'll please get one, they'll be distributed in the lobby. And children, we have cupcakes for you that you'll get at lunchtime. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for coming, and teachers, you can dismiss as you see the most orderly way to do so. Thank you.